Welcome back guys to another Knifei tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to talk about how can we use Knifei to enrich data as it flows through. Basically the there was a request in our Discord chat saying hey how can I use Knifei to enrich my data that comes from a Kafka messaging topic and then send it back to another enriched Kafka topic. All right. So we said, why not do it? Uh, it's really hard to put it in words and explain in a, in a chat. So the best thing is to just do it and let them use the template. So before you do that, you have to have Kafka installed or have access to a Kafka cluster. So if you don't have it installed and don't have access, make sure you follow this uh, tutorial here. This is for the Mac version, how you can install it on your local. And first thing you gotta do, you gotta start your Zookeeper server. So I'll jump into the command line uh, here, and we're gonna start our Zookeeper. Um, I'm already in the binary of my installation. This is gonna take probably 60 seconds. While that happens, I'm gonna start my Kafka server. Copy this, open a new terminal line paste that command and let's see if that's going to be successful because if the Kafka server starts to run before the zookeeper server then he will fail all right so it seems that it's working so one thing I did prior to this I have created two topics and here is the code for you to create those topics um my initial topic is called source and i have another topic called target so if i'm going now to my knife canvas let me zoom in a bit and let me show you guys so basically what is the layout of this i have a data producer in this case i generate some data and i'm going to post it to this kafka topic and on this side i have a kafka consumer this kafka consumer processor will read everything that is posted to this kafka topic so basically if i'll stop this one here let's stop everything first i'm going to go to the configuration the generate flow file is very straightforward doesn't carry any specific configuration but what it does it has a key value pair called name and inside byte basically this is going to be our key lookup for enrichment and this particular key is going to make is going to be used to run a query as the data flows through our database and whatever comes from the outcome of that query it will enrich it to the ongoing flow but we'll talk about it in more details once we get there great so let's apply and let's create one flow let's start now we have the kafka uh zookeeper and server up and running so we can let this flow through as we first so we can see that as this got committed and written we already have been we already have it in this pipeline so if you look here um probably it's not going to be really readable but yeah it is so it's that particular message that we just sent. So if we go over the Kafka configuration, this is straightforward knowing that it's installed on my local host. It points to my Kafka broker and the topic name that I'm writing to. And that's pretty much it. I'm just leaving it as plain text for a security reason. There's no other specification. Press OK. Now on the consumer side, uh, the same. I'm pointing to local host. I'm telling him what's the topic name I'm going to consume. The rest, uh, the group ID that is the consumer in my case, NiFi, that's the consumer. This is used for checkpointing and offset um, check. And then what I'm telling him, give me from the latest offset reset. Basically, this will give you from the offset that it's available when you start this consumer. If you want to capture the entirety of the history, you can select from earliest. Um, meaning like give me everything that you have in that topic so depending on your use case cool so now we can see that there is a next thing what i'm going to do i'm going to use an evaluate json path and store the outcome of that into a flow file attribute so you see we're looking for the the key name and we're going to store it in the attribute called name all right let's do that and list the queue and evaluate that this is the case so we can see that we get some kafka information here but what's important this is important we have the name that's called 
and the value inside byte right so he captured that next what i'll do i'll use an extract text processor so i can capture the initial payload in this case that initial json body because what i want to do i want to expel this content into an attribute so i can then later use it so i'll use the regex expression to extract everything and place it in this payload so let's go ahead and do this let's run and evaluate the outcome if you look in the queue you will observe that there's a new attribute called payload that carries the entire payload this might be big or small depending on what you're moving across great now that we have that we are going to run a query against the database that we have set locally and let me go through the specification of this processor we have the jdbc connection which if you haven't followed my tutorials until now you can look there's a specific one where i talk about how you connect to databases i'm not going to go over that right now but i also have a query which receives a parameter and you remember the name that we extracted earlier so we have select a thing from demo users where name equals to whatever comes that's going to be our key that we're trying to fetch information to enrich it so if i go to my database that i have installed locally um, just one second yeah let's run a query here and let's just do this users with no filters and i have an an entry just for the demo purpose i have an inside byte value that has address let's Let's edit this, or we, we can't even edit it. And has some address, address info. Basically, uh, that's what's going to return to our NiFi. Great. So let's leave this through. Let's stop the downstream ones because we're going to have to explain them all. Uh, right. Start, execute SQL and reach. And this one, you will populate. Uh, the flow content with the new data that comes from the database so there you go we have an array with a single item in it that tells me yep this is this is the values perfect now what i want to do i want to transform that arrow into a json so let's transform this is out of the box convert json to convert arrow to json you don't have to do nothing here we just leave it as it is just drag it on the canvas and next i'm going to evaluate the json i'm going to use the evaluate json path to actually pinpoint the attributes that I want to add to my incoming Kafka message. So in this case, I want address and info. I'm going to capture them and put them in these two attributes. Let's, let's run this one and observe. So now we see we have in this queue, uh, we have new attributes. Address that receives the value address SSS and info is info. Great. So now we have all the attributes there but you remember at the beginning when we did the extract text we captured the initial payload now i want to put that payload back into the flow file content because i want to use it i want i want it to be enriched at this point so right now we use a replace text with this regex and we replace it back with the payload that we capture at step extract text let's apply and let me just stop this one run and look at the look at the content so right now we have back our initial payload and then if you look into the attributes we also have the address with its value and the info with its value now this is the secret sauce when we're talking about enrichment we're going to use a json a joel json transform with the joel transformation dsl as chain and with this specification here so let me just walk through it it's Joel can be very hard to look and understand. Even myself, I struggle sometimes. But once I find the right format, I make sure I take a copy of it and I use this for later reference. So in this case, we're going to use an operation type default with the following specs. We're going to add these two new key value pairs that's going to re-reach the incoming flow. So you're going to see what's the outcome. Basically, I'm adding a key, a key with this value. The reach address is going to be this, blah, blah, blah. So this is good. And if we're going to run this one now, uh, we're going to look at the payload and we're going to see it's more than just the address that we, the name. So if you look, boom, we, we have in our entry point consumed from Kafka this and we end up with this. Basically, it's an enrichment process. Great. Now, 
the question for our user was like, okay, at the end of the process, I want to be able to commit my outcome to another Kafka topic that is my target. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a published Kafka here, point to this topic called target, and we're going to run it. And in this time, what I'll do, I'll also have a consumer here that consumes from the same target topic and to demonstrate that this is written to the topic. So let's start this and let's look at it. It's going to take a couple of runs until because the first fetch is always the heaviest because he creates all the checkpoints and offset. But we see we have a new flow in the way. If we list the queue and look at the data and voila, that's it. So basically, this is how I use, uh, how I would use um, NiFi to consume data from an incoming stream, enrich it with a database um, attribute. This can be tricky at this point. Uh, this is, these are some pros and cons of this approach. My SQL that I'm using, it can be very fast, but it also can be very slow depending on what you want to enrich. You have to, write the, you have, to have the right, um, how to say, indexes, the right data structures so that can assist. And if you have thousands and thousands, or I don't know, hundreds of thousands of messages coming through, um, that might take a toll. So you might look at a cache data, a cache database, where uh, or a key value database such as MongoDB that will, uh, or a document database in this case MongoDB that will help you to fetch that input faster. But anyway, this is an easy use case to implement, uh, and it kind of demonstrate how you can use Jolt to actually. You can also look up attributes for this case, but I'll put up, I'll post a video later on with how we can use the lookup attributes. Uh, for incoming records to be, uh, let's say, enriched in transit. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions or doubts, join our Discord channel. Uh, there's a link in the description. There's a bunch of people there sharing their idea and knowledge and whatever they do with NiFi. Plus, outside that, there's a bunch of data engineers that have experience. If you want to jump into this data engineering world, um, it's an opportunity for you to share knowledge and gain knowledge through that channel. And also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, um, like, subscribe. I'll continue to post stuff about NiFi and general uh, data engineering, Python stuff, anything infrastructure, stuff that will, I don't know, at the end, they will end up upskilling you in the data engineering world. All right. Hope you guys enjoy this. I'll see you in the next one.